There were many large cities in Africa during the Middle Ages, as described by Hull, in African cities and towns before the European conquest. Some of the older cities include Moreau, which was founded in 560 BC. Moreau was the capital of the ancient kingdom of Kush, and today it is in Sudan. The capital of ancient Ethiopia was Aksum, which traded goods with Mediterranean cities and Ptolemaic Egypt. The capital of the ancient Ghanaian Empire was Kumbi Salah, which had an 11th century population of 15,000 persons. Great Zimbabwe was the capital of the rural Razvi Mutapa Empire, which thrived between 1000 and 1500 AD. Still today you can see its conical brick towers, which are 10 yards or meters tall. By the year 1300 AD, the leaders of Zimbabwe were controlling large cattle herds and the gold trade. Zimbabwe was the center of a group of 150 to 200 towns. Jain and Timbuktu were the largest cities in western Sudan and were educational and Islamic centers. In the year 1495 AD, the residents of Timbuktu dug a 12 mile long canal connecting their city to the port of Kabara. Timbuktu was also a cloth center having 2,000 persons embroidering tapestries. Some contemporary European cloth made its way to Timbuktu. Many cities of more than 5,000 inhabitants were located along the Congo River. Mbanza Congo was founded in the 1400s and had a population of 30,000 persons by the year 1700. Merchants in Eastern Africa were trading with Arab, Persian, and Indian counterparts who in turn traded with those from China. Kilwa was founded in the 8th century AD and was the center of a medieval sultanate. There were 40 Swahili market towns by the year 1600. In the year 1800, the city of Sigu had 30,000 persons, while Katsina had 100,000. Many of these were Islamic cities. We saw in a previous chapter that around the year 600 AD, Islam began spreading across Africa, the Middle East, and along the equator towards Indonesia. In each new region, Islam arrived first in the cities and then spread to the outlying rural areas. Islam formalized education and increased literacy rates wherever it went. Most towns had an Islamic school and every region had its center of learning. As occurred in many places around the world, African towns and cities were sleeping quarters for farmers who commuted out to their fields. Town populations, food surplus levels, and political structures grew simultaneously. Rulers in Africa collected taxes to pay for public buildings and road construction. Goods were mostly bartered, but some cities minted metal coins. 